Hey, what's going on everyone? Bobby from Repair Shopper with another Feature Friday video. This week we're going to continue with our role of quality of life updates to Repair Shopper. A bunch of quality of life improvements have been made to the ticket section and I am super stoked to share everything with you. We're also going to cover some contract updates as well that I think a lot of people are going to be stoked about. So let's jump into some of these. Uh, let's see. First thing, let's talk about ticket comment replies. So on a ticket, when a customer replies to you, we had gotten requests to be able to see the email address of the person that replied. Sometimes when you have additional CCs on the ticket, other people might be replying and you may want to know who actually responded to you. So if you head over to the little message icon here and hover over it, you're actually going to get the email address for the person that replied to you. It's quite a little update, but it definitely helps for those of you that may be talking to a bunch of people on a single ticket. The next cool thing that we added to tickets was in the ticket CC area. So before you had to know the email address you were looking up or wanting to type in. In this case, I'm just going to use some emails for users on this account. And you're going to see an autocomplete now. Uh, the purpose of this was to, again, just kind of save some time. So just click that in, hit submit, and you're done. Um, pretty simple, straightforward stuff. But once again, we added a autocomplete dropdown into the ticket CC so that you can quickly add additional email addresses that are on the account. You can, of course, still type them in if you want. That's fully up to you. Um, but if it's already in the system, that might help you out. Let's see, the next thing I want to cover here is the new prompt we've added. Uh, we've gotten feedback from people that when a technician comes to the ticket in a rush, wants to charge a customer, they're just coming over and hit make invoice. They don't always necessarily look to see that there's an invoice already created for it and they just want it, they just click the button and they're on their way. And I'm not saying it's just technicians, but people using the software sometimes do that and businesses wanted some kind of prompt that let you know that an invoice was already created for the ticket. And it's worth noting here that there are flows in Repair Shopper where multiple tickets are expect or excuse me multiple invoices are expected on tickets uh, and there's some ins and outs to how this works. So as you can see here I already have a unpaid invoice created for this ticket and the charges have already moved on to that invoice. So if I click make invoice, the system is gonna prompt me, it's gonna say, hey, this ticket has an open invoice and what's important is the invoice that's already attached is unpaid and that's what's causing this to pop up. So it says, do you wanna continue with creating your new invoice or do you wanna go and look at the existing unpaid invoice? And I'm putting emphasis on un unpaid invoice because it's important to note that flows like deposits require there to be at least two invoices. So if you have a paid invoice already attached to this ticket and it, it, the invoice is paid, you may want to actually create a new invoice and we don't want to cause extra clicks. So if the invoice attached to a ticket is already paid, the system is just going to let you create a new invoice. We know that that's kind of how a lot of people charge customers for longer projects so you might have multiple paid invoices over the long term and on the same token for those of you working long projects that want to keep everything consolidated this is a way of preventing multiple invoices from being accidentally opened and I can already hear some of you saying that's good and great and all but I don't want that well that's cool and you can do that too so let's head to admin and then go to the ticket preferences you go to ticket preferences and then click advanced you can see right here there is an option called disable prompt for open invoices on tickets and that will totally disable that prompt let's see oh yes so we're already here so let's talk about it we got some feedback that you wanted to be able to create tickets and not default to a particular person being assigned to it, often that would be the person that created it because maybe you have 
an intake person that is checking things in from a shipment or from customers, but they're not necessarily the technician that's assigned. And you want to list all tickets in front of your technicians so that they can grab the next unassigned one. Well, there is an option to turn that on now called Tech Assignment Defaults to Blank when creating a new ticket. And if you go to create a new ticket, and I'll do that with you real quick. Well, first we should probably turn that on, huh? All right, active. Let's refresh this page. Look up the customer, enter in the ticket details. You can see here that this is blank and we added a blank spot that you can have as well. Or you can choose a person to have it automatically assigned to, it's totally up to you. Then when you create the ticket, skip that. With the rule enabled, you'll see that the ticket gets created with no assignee. Again, this is meant to help workflows where people are checking things in, but maybe they're not necessarily the same people that are doing the work. Uh, so the, the next available tech can actually grab the next free ticket or the next ticket in line, so to speak. All right, so we've covered a ton of updates. We're not done yet. Let's head to contracts. So if you head over to contracts, for a, a while we've heard people ask for a faster way to create contracts. Some of them, some of these contracts can actually be pretty detailed and you wanted a way to quickly just generate them so you can move on, move on with your day. So this first part is pretty cool. We've added the ability to clone contracts. Um, what that means is you can kind of create a template contract of sorts for maybe the different services you offer. And then when you sell or sign a contract with someone, you can come into that template like I've done here, hit clone, and then look up the customer that it might be associated with and just hit clone. And it's gonna grab everything, all the settings and bring it over. Hopefully that helps quickly generate uh, contracts for everybody moving forward. And then the last thing I wanted to cover is we've added something called a product blacklist. We received feedback that everyone, well, the people giving us the feedback anyway, wanted a way to be able to prevent certain labor or products from being sold on accident to a particular customer. Sometimes on contracts, there's a very specific labor that needs to be sold to the customer or you have maybe multiple versions of that labor and it's very similar and you don't want your technicians to just kind of cruise through things on autopilot and add it in. So now you can add particular products from your inventory, it's not just labor, to a blacklist and then if you go into a ticket and try to add that product, the system won't actually let you. Uh, just again, another way to kind of prevent someone from autopiloting through and accidentally adding the wrong labor and causing the bookkeeper more work kind of down the road. Whew, all right. That was a lot of features, lots of updates. We're still adding more features uh, and you can catch up on all this in the ticket knowledge base article, the contract knowledge base article, rewatch the video, give us some more views. Uh, I hope everyone enjoys these updates. And uh, if you could do what those kids are doing these days, hit the like button. If you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to keep bringing you guys new and fresh content for everything. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. See you everyone.